Learning Scripture, Knowing Christ. Welcome to the Hashtag One Fear Podcast. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Hashtag One Fear Podcast. And we have myself in the upper room with Danielle. With Danielle. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and Ray Lynn. Sup. Sup. And uh, today we are starting off our series on spiritual abuse and church hurt. Uh, but before we get into that, I wanted to talk about how many books we've read thus far. I got these three here. How about Am I just... Am I on book four or five? I, I think five. I think I'm on the fifth one. A fifth one, anyway. Um, so some of them are, are excellent. And some of them are like I would never recommend anybody to read these books because <laughs> they were just and it's not, not because helpful. It, it's not because it, it's not something we agree with or something. It's the yeah, way or what just, it was written. Yeah, it, it just the approach to the topic was not handled well uh, in two two of the books. <laughs> or they didn't we even talk about the topic that the book was supposed that to be about. Too. <laughs> yeah, the one, the one definitely. Um, but so far, the the books that I've read that I thought is excellent is uh, the one by Ken Blue, Healing Spiritual Abuse. And uh, that one was very, very good. Uh, the other one that I liked was When Narcissism Comes to Church by DeGroote, what's his first name? Chuck, Chuck DeGroote. And uh, I think overall, all of them that I've read, the best one, I think, is Escaping the Maze of Spiritual Abuse. Uh, and that is by Dr. Lisa Oakley and Justin Humphreys. Yeah. Yeah. That one was and, excellent. Uh you read you read those two. I right? read, you didn't read the one by Blue. No. I read the, the subtle, subtle power, power of, of abuse. The subtle power of spiritual, spiritual abuse, abuse by David R. Johnson. And that's like one of the first books that was really written about it once they coined the word yeah. spiritual abuse. And then it took some years to actually define the word. Yeah. Which we'll we'll get into that in a little bit. They here. are quoted a lot in yes. either in, in the books one, we've read or yeah. I think the, mo the most recent book on the topic is Escaping the Maze. Yeah. But abuse. if you look up online, spiritual abuse, uh, at least half of the articles or different stories that I've read, they quote that book. Yeah. Um, two other ones uh, are Overcoming Church Hurt and Abuse by Aaron Lamb. That was okay. You, you're the one that read that one. That was, yeah. Yeah. Um, and Redeeming Power. You're reading that one right now, right? Understanding Authority and yes, Abuse in the by Church. by Diane, Diane Langberg. Langberg. And I am currently reading Bold Love by Dan Allender and Tremper Longman. Tremper Longman. Tremper Longman the Third. I've read so many books by him. He really likes his name. Yeah, he's... Well, not just his name, but he's a really good guy. I know, it's just fun. You like saying his name. <laughs> Tremper. <clears throat> So anyway, so we have me and Danielle up here, and and pretty much we're going to be leading this up the whole time. And Ray Lynn, we have Ray Lynn up here because we want her to bounce different questions, ideas, and whatnot. She has no idea what we're talking about other than what I have on the outline that we have there. Mm -hmm, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I just had <clears throat> I just had a soccer game, actually two because they didn't have enough people for another game. So I was like, can I play more? And my loving wife let me. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I'm not only sore, but, like, the yelling, <laughs> I guess, is getting to my throat. <clears> throat> uh, so, anyway, are you guys ready? Yep. All right. Yeah. So, um, so, this is part one. What is spiritual abuse? And uh, we're going to look at why church hurt. Like, why are we even talking about this? Uh, we're going to define spiritual abuse in church hurt and recogn and then part th uh snippet little three recognizing spiritual abuse in church hurt and uh so with that here we go all right so the first part why church hurt like why are we even talking about this and the main thing is awareness, like be aware of it. Um, so the first thing I want to say, it, it, you know, when it comes to spiritual abuse and church hurt, there's probably so many 
thoughts, ideas, uh, scenarios, stories, everything like experiences. You might ha have sweaty palms right now. Uh, you might be thinking, wow, what kind of heresy is he going to be talking about? Um, and just there's probably just a slew of things flying through somebody's mind when it comes to the topic of spiritual abuse. Uh, so like, first of all, we want to say this is not a witch hunt. Like we're not targeting people. We're not, uh, we're going to share our own story and, and it might be unfortunate that people who know us know, <laughs> know how, uh, what we've yeah. gone through and who is connected to these stories. But, uh, the thing is, is this is not a witch hunt, honestly, a especially after reading all these books, uh, and looking back at things, I honestly, like my heart goes out to those who are the ones that do the spiritual abuse as well as my heart is really going out for those who have had to endure and maybe are currently going through spiritual abuse. Like we, we know it, well, we understand it. Because there's another aspect to it that I think it, there are people that do it that, you know, don't realize they truly believe that how things are being handled is appropriate versus some yeah. of the stuff we read that was like, so clearly manipulative abuse that yeah. most anybody could recognize U use of scripture yeah you know, to abuse um so also what it's not is we're not depreciating god in the church like it may look like that it may sound like that but really um first of all i think god can handle it um and second of all i think god will handle it <laughs> yeah. and i think that's something for us to be very very wary of if it comes down to, hey, you know what? Spiritual abuse is an actual real true thing that now I'm convinced is real yeah. and is happening, then we better be very wary of the fact that God's going to do something about it. And one of the things that came up a couple times that was really good is that bringing it to the light is not the thing that's injuring the church. It's the fact that yeah. it's happening. That it's not that's, bending, yeah. getting fixed. That it's or happening anything. and that people don't Corrected. want to address it because they're afraid of hurting the church. Yeah. Um, also, what it is not, it is spiritual abuse and church hurt is not being called out on your sin. <laughs> okay. If someone said, hey, um, what's going on in your marriage? Why are you seeing this other girl? Why are you seeing this other guy? Um, that's not spiritual abuse. That's, you know, I mean, you if can you say it hurts my feelings, but that's yeah, not, that's it, proper di dis discipline. You know, and there's a whole bunch of other different examples that we could use, like yeah. people doing things that are outright sinful and we're, and we're not doing anything about it. Yeah. You know, like that's, that's not spiritual abuse. That is, Hey, you're doing something to depreciate and devalue what yeah. Christ has done on the cross and we want that to be rectified. We want it to be healed and changed. Um, I mean, Scripture has pointed us in, in the direction to be a new creation. And if we're not being a new creation, then do we truly believe in Christ and, and, and the power that the cross has uh, supplied us? You know. Can I put like a disclaimer yeah. as we move forward? Oh, yeah. Um, Yes, there is no perfect church. There are no perfect people. Most everybody who attends the church is going to feel hurt in some way at some time, just you know, through anything. Somebody saying something that maybe they didn't mean. There's a difference between like something like that hurting you and and spiritual discipline. Like yeah. nobody is expecting a perfect church um, yeah. or expecting yeah. people to yeah. not make mistakes. And I, I'm not going to say when somebody calls you out for something that they're going to do it appropriately well, yeah. you know and you know if they're screaming and yelling at you maybe they're disappointed in you or something whatever it is <laughs> you know yeah. but what it comes down to is when we do those kinds of things it needs to be out of love you yeah. know we we need to have a concern for others people uh, for other people's spiritual well-being when it comes to those things and being hateful and angry and just outright just belligerent about what people do is not yeah. really showing love yeah. You know, Can I, so. I'm also going to back up because I yeah, feel like, okay, go ahead. Okay. So when we said like, okay, why, why this, there's also the aspect we said, we're going to share our story. Well, why us or why, you know, whatever. And I think you and I both very much realize the things that we've gone through, um, 
either individually before we got married or in our marriage that we were going to allow God to use it or we were going to bring glory to God through it. Yeah. And it's not about bringing attention to us. It's about bringing attention to the situation because we are one of many. And so because there's a lot of people that don't feel they have the voice, we're stepping out. Um, and oh, yeah. I it, When you say stepping out, I feel like maybe a, a better definite, a better way of saying it is we're putting our head on the block. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, it's just, I'm just being honest. There's yeah. probably a slew of Christians that, you know, you know, if word gets around that we're doing this, uh, like that's what I'm constantly thinking of. Yeah. Like, oh, they're doing this and they're doing that. Well, please listen to the whole thing first. Yeah. And, it's, and it's mainly because of the amount of stories that we know of personally or we've heard of before us. Yeah. And that continue to happen to where we really, this wasn't like a, we're angry and we're going to up and do this. It's, it's been a process and it's been yeah. a, something needs to be done. We have voices. Yeah. And, and honestly, it, it really reminds me of when we had our first miscarriage. Uh, we've done an episode on that. And uh, we mentioned that, you know, when it happened, like so many people came out and said, Hey, us we too. too. Yeah. And it was like, whoa, that many people. So like when it comes to spiritual abuse, I think that's where this is yeah. at. Yeah. You don't know about it until you talk about it. And then someone says, yeah. wait a minute, that sounds familiar. Well, and that, that's what these books really showed too. Yes. So many yes, of them were did. like, oh my gosh, we went out to survey this and had no idea the response that they were going to get. And I think one of the things that came to me is that there's a lot of people that are you know, just move on, move forward. Yeah, it happens. Yeah. But I think that that's when people then kind of shut down and, but that they're not healing and something yeah. is, is festering or not moving because yeah. they it, can't put voice to it. They can't put words to it. And so we start talking to them and, and this, you know, light bulb, you literally see a yeah, light bulb go a, off and it's like, <laughs> there's oh. been, there's been a couple of people that are like, oh, oh, that does make sense. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we're going to, we're going to yeah. get a little bit more into that. Yeah. Uh, in other, in another. Yeah. Uh, I just part. wanted to lay out and why us. <laughs> yeah. And um, why not? So the history of silence and secrecy, because it, it is a thing. Uh, yes. this, th there's a culture of silence and we're going to talk about that. And I think part three of this yeah, more where depth, like, sure. you just, like, you just don't talk about it. You just, you know, don't talk about Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say uh, it. Yeah. I'm actually going to bring that up during that podcast episode. So because it, 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 it's like such a per it's like there's no perfect example uh, illustration or anything. But that movie hit it on the nail like yeah. um, the, the culture of silence. But anyway, the history of its silence and secrecy. Not many are even aware of spiritual abuse and church hurt because there is a culture of silence surrounding it. I've never and, heard of it until talking to you guys. Yeah. And so that's why it's important. You don't uh, know well, it exists. In, in the one book that we, I think it was in the maze, uh, it, what it mentioned is that, you know, 60, 70 years, whatever it was ago, when domestic abuse was kind of like, oh, this is one of those things that's kind of, it's happening. And over the next couple of decades, they started gathering information, gathering data about who's doing it, why are they doing it? And, uh, you know, fast forward, uh, couple generations later how many decades later it's like yeah it's a real thing okay. and i think for spiritual abuse I, I agree with what the book was saying i that spiritual abuse is in that stage right now where we're there's data being collected nobody's talking about it you know just yeah. like domestic abuse no, it's like have propriety don't talk about yeah. that kind of thing well and one of the things that it even says is the reason that they realized this is a real thing and we need to uh, now the other is the definition could keep growing and shifting yeah, as they, it's being developed. Well, they shared like three yeah. different ones in the book. But the point being that these are people that study all sorts of psychology and all different things. And they have found in all of this research that they've done is psychologically like so mentally, spiritually, sometimes even physically and mentally, emotionally, people are damaged the same from spiritual abuse as other forms of abuse, which is, yeah. I think why it was like a big, Oh, we have to do something with this. Yeah. So it wasn't just like, Hey, we've been talking to some hurt people and we should throw a definition at them. There was a lot that went into it for them to realize. Yeah. Big deal. And, uh, I, 
like I'm nervous and excited all at the same time to be a yeah. part of this, like yeah. bringing out this topic and putting it out there, this, this discussion, yeah. because I think we are leaving that era of not talking about it. Have, yeah. s- have some propriety. As long yeah. as it's done well. <laughs> yeah. And that is our, I mean, that is our prayer that it's done well. Yes. All right. Number two. Yep. Number two, defining spiritual abuse and church hurt. And this is, I, I copied this right out of uh, the, uh, Escaping the, the Maze, the maze, maze book. <laughs> I'm just going to, that's the a long title. Book. That's a long title. So I'm just going to say The Maze Book. Uh, and you all know what I'm talking about. Um, so here it goes. Spiritual abuse is a form of emotional and psychological abuse. It is characterized by a systematic pattern of coer- coercive and controlling behavior in a religious context. Spiritual abuse can have a deeply damaging impact on those who experience it. This abuse may include manipulation and exploitation, enforced accountability, censorship of decision-making, requirements of secrecy and silence, coercion to conform, control through the use of sacred texts or teaching, requirement of obedience to the abuser, the suggestion that the abuser has a divine position, Isolation as a means of punishment and superiority and elitism. And uh, that is, that's actually a quote from Oakley in 2018 who penned that definition. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, like, who does this? You know, like, uh, I, I bet it, depending on where you are in the church, uh, if you do go to a church or if you pastor a church, you're probably thinking of different individuals that might be doing that. And uh, I would advise don't do that. <laughs> um, don't don't like point your finger at other people saying like, oh, they do this, they do that. Because uh, I mean, if you really want to to point fingers, I would first read the uh the narcissism when narcissism when narcissism comes to church um that is one of those books where i was thinking like wait a minute am i a narcissist (laughs) (laughs) um are they a narcissist like did do they have tendencies that like that and i look at my cat and i'm like yeah you're definitely a narcissist (laughs) (laughs) yeah now if there's like actual issues like as if you hear that and you go oh that needs to be addressed. Like that's different than like, don't sit around and look and, you know, pinpoint. <laughs> yeah. I, honestly, especially if, if you're like just attending a church or you're a part of whatever leadership group that's like under the pastoral staff or elders, whatever it is, um, you might be saying like, oh, maybe, maybe the leaders in my church are like that. Uh, but honestly, if you see your leader serving and that is where their authority comes from, stay yeah but if they're like flexing their muscles and doing stuff like taking scripture out of context uh using different teachings in uh in order to coerce you into doing certain things uh like it it could be even as subtle as you know the bible says this so i really need you to help out and serve and show up and do this and do that and it's like simple things, like just be there, be present, be a warm body, maybe um, stack the chairs when you're done. Um, but really, that could be a form of spiritual abuse because where are your allegiances? Is it to your family or is it to a program at the church? Yeah. You know, it, like, oh, well, they have family issues because of this, this and that. It has nothing to do with us taking them away. Uh, from time with family you know it could be something as subtle as that or it could be as like in your face where like i mean how many times in the church many many churches in many many denominations it's coming out that you know there's a a lot of like different sexual abuse and and other things going on um i think the other part of the definition though was like this is um not like all the time but it's more consistent like if you've seen somebody do this like one time like yeah it's it, this, it's this is more like over. okay we've seen a pattern of something because i guarantee you almost everybody has probably at one time done one of these things yeah 
And I mean, I know, like, I know we have, and not, and like, looking at this going, like, never, never would have intended. And like, maybe it was like a one time thing, or we didn't understand scripture correctly at the time. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But when you or see. It was taught to us in a certain yeah. way where we thought it was yeah. okay. But like, you yeah. see, it happened this time. Okay, then another time. And not just to you. You know what I mean? Like, if it was just yeah. that one person, maybe that's just a toxic relationship. I don't know. <laughs> but, like, when it's this pattern of... Pers- personalities yeah. clashing. Yeah. But, yeah. like, the same but thing over and over with different people, different situations. Yeah. So don't be um, like, they did this. They're abusive. Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and the thing is, it does go, it does go both ways. Yeah. It is a part of the uh, leaders do it and congre- congregants yeah. do it as well. The thing is, though, is that leaders are in a position where they are able to do it mm-hmm. to a whole lot of people. Whereas like one congregation will, w- they might do it against the leader. You know what I mean? So it, it's always going to be, it, it's just, and it's unfortunate too, uh, that the church leaders, the pastors, the elders and, and whatnot, uh, that they are the ones that are in the position to do that, to, to exact the, um, the spiritual abuse be mainly just because of their position. And, uh, and that, and that brings me to say like, okay, well, if it's, if that's the way that it goes, then the church needs to get better equipped with wisdom and knowledge. Uh, for example, it's like, it's one of those things, well, I have the gift of discernment. Well, it seems very convenient that you discerned that you, things should go your way <laughs> instead of other, uh, instead of for the, the best of many. You know, and, and that's just <clears throat> that's just a random example. But what it comes down to is how are we going to communicate scripture and how are we going to communicate the love of God towards other people so that anybody who is not a Christian will see the legitimate love of who, of Christ and see the real Jesus? Because if it's, you know, look to your pastor only, then there, there might be a, a bit of an issue there. Right, so that, that's the, the definition of spiritual abuse that uh, is straight out of the maze book. And uh, go on to number three? Yeah. All right. So number three, recognizing spiritual abuse and church hurt. It happens enough, but how do we become aware of it if there is no dialogue? And we've already talked about that. Like it, It's something where we need to have dialogue. I'm not saying that we need to argue. Um, we need to have an open, honest, and vulnerable conversation with others concerning this. Uh, get the young and the old together and, and talk about what's going on. I, I Venture into scripture and say, tell me, where is this in scripture? What you are doing, how is that justified with scripture? How is it okay with that? Uh, because I, I don't, I personally don't want to trust a human to discern something that they say is spiritual, that is from scripture or whatever. Uh, and honestly, it might just be something that has to do with a, a poor uh, interpretation of scripture. You know, we've already pointed out in this, in this podcast how easy it is to use eisegesis um what was the one when we first started doing this it was like some pastor was saying using scripture to say like his wife the should trophy be a, the wife trophy thing. wife thing yeah oh my gosh and it's like come on i mean that's that's kind of blatantly obvious but yeah. there's uh, that's but the there kind of people that believe that yeah uh but the, that's the conversations that we need to have <clears throat> that's the kind of conversations that we need to have to talk about scripture because you know what we could be wrong and when it comes to spiritual abuse we may not be being spiritually abused it might just be we have a wrong understanding of what scripture has for us um and that's why i i'm I'm saying we need to get equipped not just the leaders either we need to equip the congregation i think we also need to be to realize that it's it's not comfortable and most people don't like to be outside their comfort zone and it's not comfortable to think I you know I don't I don't want to think about 
you know, my leaders or people that I love doing these things or just kind of living in a place of denial. And the point of this isn't to realize it and then be against those people. It's to realize it and take action to bring reconciliation and healing to the situation. So when, you know, when we start having these conversations, there, there should be an end goal of, you're not always going yeah you're not always yeah. going to reconcile but the the point is to make the body of Christ function as it's supposed to and i use the analogy of if you broke your arm would you tell somebody let it go the rest of your body works fine yeah like you would do what you can to restore it to the best working ability and so when talking about this our goal is love and your your goal should be love to bring that back together yeah and and for us the we didn't we were not granted the the opportunity for reconciliation uh which we then attempted for closure and we weren't even offered that <laughs> either um in fact we we were thrust into uh the culture of silence we realized that it was a real and present thing uh so to even talk about it it was so, so very difficult because nobody would listen. Uh, people were wanting to, uh, wanting us to talk about things with them. Uh, but on, like, honestly, in the place that we were at, it was like, I really don't want to talk to you. I, I, I'll just be honest. Like, it's not going to work. I've already tried to talk to the people I thought it would work best with. And we ended up getting knives in our backs uh, because of that. So... It, like just more talking is not always going to be the solution. You know, like sometimes the solution is pack your things, <laughs> you know, um, and, and it is unfortunate. We've, we've been there and it is not fun. Um, especially it, like it's a family thing and it's like the parents got divorced and the kids are being torn back and forth. Yeah. So like the friends and the relationships that we've developed, they've all but disappeared. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's good to see people out at the stores or at the baseball fields or what, and whatnot. But really, it's just not the same. Yeah. And um, so like that, you, I mean, you brought up like a little bit of the story. And some of it is that it wasn't an unwillingness to talk all together. It was that we knew we needed to wait to get to a place that we had not, maybe not even digested it, but had realized, okay, we can talk about this well. We weren't ready. Yeah. And, and really it was because we were so vexed. Yeah. Like why we talked about this. Why would you do that to me? Yeah. You know, it was one of those deals and it was just like, I am not in the right place to talk about this right yeah. now. Like. <laughs> And the sad part was the reason we ended up being thrust into silence was because there was no support and there was no support yeah. in, in helping us get to that place or allowing us to be what we needed to be at the time. It yeah. was be this or be nothing. Yeah. And so like when you say like the divorce thing, um, I will say that has been more and more clearly recently one of the most painful parts of all of this yeah and because it, it's like it's one of those things where it's like a, a needle in your flesh yeah. and you it's like yeah that's bugging me but you don't realize the infection that happened yeah. until it's too late um and, and it's kind of like we know it's there and we know the potential because we're not <laughs> Like, we're fun. <laughs> we, we have the we, ability to be fun. We, yeah. <laughs> we do. Um, but it's, it's one of those things where we, I, I just really feel like we were robbed because we were not able or willing to conform to something that we didn't yeah. think was scriptural. Yes. And to be clear, there was no uprising. There no, was no, no like no, outright. I mean, it was just <clears throat> at that time was not the right time. No, it wasn't. But... Um, like when I, th so I think a lot of times when people think, oh, you left because of church hurt, like, or a lot of people think you left a church 
you are you didn't may, get your may, own way maybe yeah you yeah. were weak you had st- stupid issues people yeah. leave churches for the wrong reason all the time yeah, but the truth is this was how how long in the ma- in the making over two years yeah, over two years yeah and because we were committed to the church body we were committed to christ we you know it was not an easy decision um and most of the people we know that have walked through the same thing, it was also not a throw my hands up, didn't get my way, walk out the door. It was a painful, long process that they Arduous. so desperately yeah. wanted to end differently. Yeah. And so when you have kids in all of this too, like you get to the point where you yeah. have to explain and, something to them. And the age that our kids were at too, it was like, how do we even explain it to them? Like, I, I feel like we got to wait. Yeah, which we ended up, you know, our kids actually handled deep conversations very well. Um, But back then it was like, they were young. But I'll be very honest, like recently I have struggled more um, when I see a lot of the relationships happening with people that we used to be part of that. Yeah. And when I see that, I am so deeply heartbroken. Like... We love babies, you know, and it's like when we see someone that we were so close to uh, announce that they have a baby, it's like that just, yeah, I'm not a part of that. Um, or like the big adventures of moving and it's like, we've been, we, oh gosh, that is so stressful. Yeah. Please let us help. Yeah. <laughs> you need the help. Um, and, and I'm not going to say it's across the board either uh, because there are still some that we have close yeah, connections yeah. to. But there's just yeah. like, there's this whole, you know, at one time, maybe yeah. we were part of this big group and it's like, you see it still functioning in some form yeah. without, and so like you said, the divorce thing is very much, you don't just divorce the spouse, yeah. you divorce and the family. Yeah. And, and church is a yeah. dysfunctional family, yeah. you know? And, and we're not <laughs> saying like, we've divorced church. We're yeah. saying that that, yeah. that's what that break we're, felt we're, like. We are a part of the family. Yeah. Um, uh, but, yeah, it's, it, it is just not the same. And, and that's why we keep on, that's why we're emphasizing that we need to be equipped. We need to be aware yeah. of spiritual abuse and, uh, and knowing what it is, how to recognize it. Um, yeah. So hopefully the, the next couple episodes will we'll do that. And uh, speaking of different silencing and uh, stuff like that. Recognizing uh, other. Re- recognizing it. Yeah. Um, uh, and maybe even helping recognizing uh, spiritual abuse, you might hear things like this, okay? Uh, the mislabeling is a weapon. For example, you're gossiping, and if you talk about it, it uh, you're gossiping if you talk about it to others. The thing is, we've got to talk about it. And it's our story. And, and it's our, it, like, We are not spreading <clears throat> somebody else's and, story. Uh, like, it, it, that's just not fair. Yeah. I mean, look at any other form of abuse. What do they do? They tell you, don't talk about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, swallowing more than you can handle, for example. Just ignore it. Those feelings will eventually go away. That's so hurtful. <laughs> I'm just going to throw it out there. Don't tell me to ignore these passions. The knife that is sticking the, out of like, my back. I, like, it's just one of the, like, yeah, we could joke about it. Like that one video that we saw, like, uh, hun, you have something sticking out of your head. And it's like, not help. Like, it's not helpful for her to be told that she needs that removed. <laughs> she wants to talk about other things. And it's, and it's humorous. But the thing is, when hurt like this is happening, there's got to be an outlet. And if there is no outlet, then it's just going to churn inside. It's and grief. It, it, it's, it's a grieving. It's a mourning. It's, there's all a slew of other different emotions, anger, frustration. I, me, I was so vexed. And if you don't know what that word means, look it up. It's, <laughs> that was me. You might see my picture. <laughs> I don't know. But it was just like, it was so confusing because I felt so on fire. I felt so like excited about you know i'm working on my ma- on my masters at the time and i just want to talk about all the stuff that i learned like think about that kind of fire like you it's like i read this today and i, I learned this about christ and it's like whoa you know <laughs> like i just got to tell somebody and then it, like 
who's like, okay. Like, I'm not trying to belittle others <laughs> when I say this, but the first person that I wanted to talk to was somebody that I thought would be on fire just as much as me. Be really that, excited that you hit and that. that. Would, and that I hit that. And that would be pastors. Because I figured, you know, this is master level biblical studies. Yeah. They they might they might get what I'm talking about, maybe. They might dialogue. They, they might feedback. be able to have dialogue and, and feedback where somebody else would just be like, oh, that's cool. You know, and so, and, and what I was welcomed with, with was just, yeah, we don't really use, uh, different, uh, biblical criticisms or anything like that. I was like, oh, there was no welcoming the, of it was talking about it. There was no, Hey, that's, that's great. There was, there was nothing, there was no form of enthusiasm or encouragement in what you were pursuing. Yeah. So then I talked to other people about it. And they're like, well, that's too smart for me. <laughs> or, oh, that, that's good. Like, yeah, just keep on in the word. And it was just so disheartening that like, you know, just ignore it. Yeah. It'll go away. Like, should I ignore the passions and the fire that are, that's in my soul that I, it just has to come out? And when it comes to spiritual abuse, there is a passion there. It's not just emotions that are negative. There is a reason why we get hurt because of these things is because we have a passion for God. And when God is assaulted in us, that just that there's things that get moved, you know, like I'm telling you, if somebody ever came after my wife, I wouldn't be like, well, I just need to ignore this. If somebody came after my kids, I doubt my wife, Danielle, I doubt you would say, oh, I just need to get my emotions under control. Calm down. Chill. <laughs> just chill out. Move on. You can have Move more on. babies. Yeah. <laughs> like that is just absolutely ludicrous. I don't think people understand how important a church is to your growth. Like th that. And that's why it's so downcast. Like they don't take it seriously. Yeah. Like you feel such a connection to like a church because like those are the people teaching you, guiding you through your journey with Christ. And if, yeah. we, if they're not going to be supportive, if anybody there is not going to be supportive, it's going to literally break you in half mm -hmm. just because those people are the ones you're relying on. It would hurt so bad. I can't even imagine it. Wow. Well, yeah. and, and like you said, so in this case, it's, it hurts bad because they were, they were mentors. They were people we looked up to. They were people we thought were friends. It wasn't because like, oh, we deserve better than this. And now we're angry at them. So like, like you're saying, even before you started attending church, like, if we had been the ones who, who did that to you. I couldn't handle it. Like, I would, I would feel like I did something wrong. I don't even know if I'd be able to reconcile a relationship with God because of yeah. it. Because, like, you guys have mm -hmm. taught me so much. So, like, if that were to interfere yeah. here, like, I don't even know yeah. how I would recover. Well, and you hit the nail on the head with it. Can I reconcile with God? Because some people might think, you're taking this too far. Or, you know, why this? You're just injuring things. People get hurt. Well, we were able... I mean, it wasn't always easy, but we were able to find a church family and thankfully work through to realize like, okay, you know, the church is still important, but there are people who are at a place that maybe they're new in their faith or something has happened before. And if this kind of thing gets put on them, you've, it's not just church hurt anymore. You have put them in a spiritual jeopardy pretty much. Like, yeah. are, are they, who, who's God then? Yeah. If this is what, if this is what Christianity is going to be like, then I don't yeah. want a part of it. And, and I'll be honest, that was a, that was something that went through my head and, uh, and I'll be, uh, we're being very vulnerable. I'll, I'll be extra vulnerable. I honestly have not wanted to take any pastoral, uh, positions anywhere, mainly because the people that hurt me were pastoral people, pastoral staff. And it's like, if that's, if that's how things are going, I don't want to be identified if as that. If that's what people look at and say, well, that's a good pastor, that, that's what you don't want to be identified with. Because it wasn't yeah, that, yeah, it wasn't that yeah, like these were people. <laughs> well, because there are the people, like we said, that are, well, it's pretty obvious. Yeah, to, but like yeah, when you right. look at people, and it's not that they're even bad people. That's the thing is there is good in them. There is, there's passions in them. They, they have 
things that they want to do that are great things. But it's still like they're capable of doing these things. They're capable of not reconciling these things. And then people are still looking at them like they do nothing wrong. They'll say that they do something wrong, but they don't mm-hmm. act like they do something wrong. I don't, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, so any bad things are hidden to where you don't even know how to deal with bad things because it's never shown. Yeah. And so to, to look at that and go, well, everybody thinks that this is amazing. I don't want to be that because it wasn't amazing for me. Yeah. So almost like growing up in a dysfunctional, I'm not saying I did. If you grew up in a dysfunctional family, say your dad was an abuser in whatever form, most kids either will grow up to, they'll either grow up to be the same or they'll look at that and go, I want to be nothing like that. Yeah. And I think that's kind of where and you how, landed. Like, that, it is because, I mean, working on my master's, it was like, it was eye opening. I was surprised that I did so well because <laughs> you worked really hard. I, I did work hard because like when I was in high school and my first go around of, of college that uh, I went to for two years and dropped out, it was because I just didn't have it in me. Yeah. I did not have a passion for, for something. And uh, then I realized it's like, uh, wait a minute. I, I do love Jesus. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and, and then pursued youth ministry at Valley Forge and that, and then years later working on my master's, it was like, that's where my passion was. That was, and you like lit and, up and you thrived in those things. I, yeah. And then, yeah. And then, yeah. And, and I've seen it in other people. Like I, I, I know people that know math really good light up when they talk about <laughs> numbers. <laughs> like to me, that's like, oh, uh, okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I know how to balance my checkbook. <laughs> That's yeah. not where your passion is. That's not where my yeah. passion is. Um, and, and that brings me to the next one, misplaced history. So, for example, you might hear you're acting out on your past hurts. So I might ask then, how would you know what my past hurts are? Unless you're venturing to say, oh, yep. If you tell me, yep, okay, you told me that's that's what it is. Or you're completely ignoring the fact that it's current hurt yeah is that also is that what falls under i know we're going to hit on majorly later but does that fall under gaslighting where it's yeah. we didn't do yeah. that yeah it's we're, either you did that or they did that yeah, that wasn't me that's going to be like part four or five yeah. or something but i mean that's kind of and that i might aspect. as well say this now we have no idea how many parts this is going to be <laughs> i think we have like five or six um lined up maybe five i don't remember Anyway, um, and then the authority blanket. For example, you might hear they are the pastor or leader, etc. They have that spiritual authority, knowledge of scripture, or vision from God. Or they're the God's anointed. They're God's anointed, and that's been that's a whole taken other, out of context yep. a lot. Touch not the Lord's anointed. Are you David? Are you Saul? <laughs> Sorry. It's. <laughs> Did you, did you see Saul going to the bathroom at the time in that cave? <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, we, get, we got, yeah. Take, next take, take two. Yeah, take two. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm sorry. Anyway. Uh, but the, those are just a couple little snippets of what you might hear to recognize spiritual abuse. And uh, uh, we, we are going to venture into different ways to recognize the abuser and the victim uh, in the next part. Uh, uh, But for now, what we can leave you with, uh, with everything that we've talked about is ask questions and to talk about it. Uh, You are more than welcome to email us. Uh, We like we've, we set off when we started this venture (laughs) that we would never name names and uh, that we'd never, name places. And like I said, in the beginning of this one, it might be unfortunate that people who do know us that hear this know what we're talking about. And honestly, I'll even say you probably, some of it you may not even know because yeah. it's not, it's not just one place. Um, so yeah. Um, but ask questions. There are reasons, uh, books are written too. We've read how many books we, we talked about. They, you know, there, there's this, this thing, Thing in church called humility that is not actually humility it's not humbleness to say like oh they're 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 talking about their education so they're prideful 
No, we, we approach these books with humility and vulnerability uh, because we, we needed to put words to, our, to what was going through our hearts and souls uh, and, and running through our minds. These books are conversations. You know, I mean, if you've ever seen the picture of, of our uh, of the upper room, I got this whole big shelf of, uh, you know, all my novels over there. The Wheel of Time. Wish the show was horrible. Um, oh, dear. Maybe cut that out. I, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Whatever. Uh, hey, they got the names right. But the books are so I know much I've voiced my they, opinion they very were good. loudly on they social were media, good. but maybe but... not in the podcast. <laughs> it was still good. It was just... I, I just feel like it was, it's not the wheel of it's time. Not the it's wheel something time. else. It's yeah. Uh, but anyway, all these, all these books I, that I've referenced to and read through and, and, and all that, they are my, my conversation partners. Uh, a professor of mine taught me that. And he had the same professor that I had who also taught me the same thing, that these books are conversations and uh, they're, they're ice, they're icebreakers too. You know, it's continue to talk with, with other people about it too, but ask questions. Uh, another thing, find someone you can trust to talk through and, and break things down. It, it, like try to find just one person though, because it got, for us, it got to the point where no, we can't talk to more people because it, it, too many people are getting involved in this that don't need to be involved. The people that should have talked with us, they didn't. Uh, so they did talk. I should, I should clarify. They did talk with us, but at the most pivotal points is when we were given the cold shoulder. And I will say that if, if somebody's talking to multiple people, maybe try to look at why, because in a culture of silence, that person, because that person was me, is dying for somebody to listen, believe them, and help them. Yeah. And so in talking to, and I'm not like, when I say multiple people, I'm not out there like shouting my stories from, you know, the corners of the street. It, it's just, there's multiple friends and it was just, why do I continually feel like there's a wall? Like, you know, people that I'm just, you're close to me, I'm bleeding, can you please help me? And so yeah. there are some people that I think you will find out are doing it in a, in a vindictive manner. And I, they want you to open well, up so they can use it. I will wholeheartedly yeah. tell you my aim. And I know many others aim is not vindictive. It is I'm hurting. Please help me. And so like when we say find that one person, one or maybe even two that have like different, uh, that are coming from different places. Cause it is good to have, that because if you just find somebody who's like-minded or you know whatever but like even even find a counselor like if you if you don't think that you can go to a friend with this because they're too close to the uh the uh, situation the situation or the the people the other people involved you know whatever it might be uh too ingrained in the church uh, as a part of the church go go find somebody else that is not and if you can't afford a counselor i would say um approach a church like a lot of churches will have things in funds to even help with like a couple of counseling. Like I had that yeah. in the past when we weren't in a place where I could afford it, but it was really beneficial. So they helped pay for it. Yeah. And lastly, get educated. And I think I already mentioned that, uh, yeah. that things are going to get vexing. Uh, Cause that, that's where I was at. And a lot is not going to make sense and a lot is not going to add up. So don't, I, I, I'll also throw this out there. Make sure that you're in a place that if you venture to these books that we mentioned, that you're ready for it. Yeah. When, yeah. Well, like you said, when we approach them humbly, like we're never to approach the Bible or any of those things with like a, I need to get in here to prove my point. Like yeah. Yeah, there well, might I, be parts in, of scripture that do. Yeah. But honestly, it, the thing is like, if this, this is spiritual hurt, yeah. uh, abuse, this is church hurt. And they may have used scripture yeah. to to do that hurt. Scripture is probably the last thing that you want to <laughs> go to, you know. Yeah. Like that. That's it's kind of like, you know, when when somebody is abused in in a certain way. Like I, I can't think of, a, of an example, uh, but they might connect these events yeah. with something, 
and they avoid that something or yeah yeah Yeah. Uh, a certain place a certain smell uh, a certain uh, look that the abuser might have like there there's certain things like that and you know we're not going to say you know we want you in scripture but we're not going to say don't go to scripture um, or just to go to scripture there needs to be time for that it needs to be uh, you know the I, I don't like when people say tough love because when you look at the love chapter, tough is not in that description of what love is. It's really not. So when it comes to, you know, suck it up buttercup and read, read your Bible, I'm not going to tell you that. You know, I, I'm going to tell you, find, find somebody to talk to. And if they're going to throw the, throw the Bible down your throat, then maybe talk to somebody else. But like yeah. when you approach any of these books, like... I think when we finally approached it, we were in a place where it was just trying to find understanding. It wasn't at a place of, I'm going to read all of these books that prove me right. Because there was a lot of things in it that were um, even eye-opening, like an eye-opening to like, oh, that, oh, that gave a definition to something that I wasn't realizing. Um, I mean, as we read through, I mean, some of them were like gut punches. Some of it were like, I need to sit this down for a little bit. Um, so that's what, like when we're saying we approach this, approach it, I guess, with no, no agenda. I don't know if that's, because like our main agenda was, I just want clarity. Yeah. I just, want more information. Just, yeah. And, and really that's the best yeah. approach to do it is for that clarity, be aware of what's going on because <clears throat> you might even be wondering, was I uh, spiritually abused? And you read these books and then you find out, oh no, I wasn't. Yeah. And that's awesome. Yeah. And, and we, we're that's hoping great. that people we're will hoping, find yeah. out that they were not. Um, <clears throat> maybe you find out that you were at fault. You know, like what's the worst that can happen if we are aware of things? Like, for example, uh, our furnace broke. And it's like we were not aware of that until we realized. <laughs> until I said, hey, hey it's cold. Furnace kicked <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah. We didn't realize it. So it, it might take a while. Um, but realizing things, you know, maybe you were a part of it, maybe you weren't, but we need to understand and and be educated and approach it in a manner that, uh, is to be informed. Well, I think that was a, a good ending to, to this one. Yep. All right. So we will continue this discussion, this dialogue, uh, next week with uh, the profile of inflictions is is what it's going to be called. So thank you very much for listening. And uh, it truly, uh, if if you feel like you want to, need to, email us. Uh, Our email is contact at onefear.net. And uh, anything else, uh, rate and review. Check us out on social media. And per the usual, Live such such good good lives. lives.